Hey, what's up folks? Welcome back to Duster Bust. So finally ready to talk about head porting. So I've been working on this a couple weeks on and off because some parts and tools and stuff I had to get. So we'll go through that in a second. But basically I've been, you know, researching what do I need to do from a head porting standpoint, um, doing the work, trying to assemble all the right stuff. I am definitely no expert at this, but this video is more of hey, here's what I'm doing and here's why and here's what I think is gonna be good. Um, and then take that with a grain of salt and uh, you know, making up your mind on what you wanna go do. So let's go through. These are the original iron heads off of our 74 Plymouth Duster. All right, so top level, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to improve airflow uh, in and out of the chambers and into the, uh, into the exhaust. Now some watch outs, you'll see people start to talk about, well, air velocity, and that can play a, a factor. Um, David Vizard, somebody, um, Tasman, sent me a link to David Vizard stuff, very professional level um, look at head porting. I definitely recommend people go and watch that to see what the pros do, but let's be honest, at the level that I'm working on here, rule of thumb is gonna get me a long ways with basic equipment so that's what i'm going after here so let's first look at some of the tools and stuff because this was kind of a pain to get the right stuff together to do the work and then we're going to go through and i'm going to show you guys the specific points that i worked on and why all right so just a quick rundown of the tools that i use doing this there's other options as well but this is what worked for me so first off, a set of some basic brushes just to get in the different passageways. Uh, next, to, to really do the right um, boring out of everything, you need some form of rotary tool. Um, I prefer electric ones. I love my Dremel tool. This thing is fantastic, variable speed, and you have really good control um, with it. And I'm using a, I, I bought a pack of dye burbits and um, these, these worked out pretty well, and these were cheap Amazon ones, and th these run on eighth inch shank, and at low speed, I got away with that. Now, I did also have to pick up a quarter inch shank die grinder, so this is the Harbor Freight one. First thing I'll say is, overall, it's a pretty good tool, but in order to really maintain control of it, I also had to buy myself a variable speed controller, just otherwise, it's 24,000 RPM and it's just too fast for me to really maintain control of it. So I definitely recommend um, picking up some, some form of variable speed controller. So what I'm using for that, I did pick up some cheap Amazon die bits. Do not buy these, these are just straight up dangerous. Uh, they're not balanced well enough for high speed even though they say they are. Don't buy these, opt for some good fast and all ones. Um, you're not gonna regret it if you do. So you're gonna need a couple of those if you're running a quarter inch. Uh, I also got some cartridge, um, some cartridge rolls here. These worked out really well also on the, on the quarter inch. And what I did for most of my work is I used this for most of my material removal and then I came back with my cartridge rolls and kind of smoothed things out a little bit. All right, so starting out, you know, start with the easy stuff first. Um, the original has this casting slag uh, and these oil passageways. So just went through first, knocked all of that off, smoothed these out. And then I went to just doing an overall knocking off of the perimeter edge. So just coming along here. And the reason for that is what I read was that sometimes imperfections there will hurt your mating surface. So if there's a little bit of a burr, it might cause you know you to be a little high there. So it's, you know, just go off and very carefully knock that little edge down all the way around. All right, let's talk first about, all right, exhaust. All right, so we are on the exhaust end intake. I basically went the gasket matching approach. So what we're gonna do here, is this is the gasket that came with the headers that I'm gonna be using. So if I hold this up on here, and basically you wanna, you know, put it in place and then paint pen marker it. And uh, and you can see here that, that I basically cut everything out to line up 
to follow the gasket. Now, per summit, you don't want to actually do it to the headers, so I'm not going to mess with the headers, but I did go through and remove a bunch of material. Now, this, you also got to keep in mind the airflow direction. So air is going to be coming out this way, so you want to keep this edge kind of sharp all the way around. Just for perspective, so this, you know, it matches up pretty well. Just holding it up on here to the original, you can see how much material we actually removed. So pretty, pretty significant amount of material removal on here. So we'll see, hopefully that, I think it'll help. I don't think that this will be too much. Um, I think it'll be fine. All right, let's go to the intake side. All right, here is my Edel, Edelbrock RPM air gap um, intake manifold. And I bought an Edelbrock gasket and matched to that. Now, I probably jumped the gun on it. If I had to do it again, I might have skipped this part for now. Uh, but it's done, what's done is done, and I don't think I'm at the point where I will get into any issues from having a, a low air velocity. We'll just have to see. So I milled up a little bit off of this, but this was already much bigger than the uh, the inlet of the head. So I did do these, but you know, your choice of if you wanna do that or not. But first, let's look here. And here, you know, since the air is coming in, this being a little more rounded is not gonna hurt us, um, but you wanna, you know, try to smooth it out for flow, but I'm basically gasket matched here and smoothing, you know, smooth all of this out as much as you can. Uh, trying to not go too deep in there, but you wanna go at least an inch in and try to smooth it. Careful not to go into any of these you know, bolt holes, chambers, or uh, actually those may be, those are for the, uh, the rods. So anyways, don't, don't, don't go crazy with it, but you wanna open up and have a nice transition. Here, take, let's take a look, quick look here, just for perspective on the stock one. You gotta make sure you get it lined up just right. But again, quite a bit of material that, that we knocked off. So hopefully that gives us a little bit of flow. All right, lastly, let's go into the bowls. Cause I think that's probably the, the trickiest part. All right, so let's come on over here. And a couple things that we wanna do. So first, don't touch the seats. You do not wanna mess with the seats. And they are hardened, so if you start to nick it a little bit, it, it sparks, so that it's kind of one indicator that you're going too far. So the changes that we wanna do in the seats are, we basically wanna smooth out any hard points, and these are very inconsistent in the original casting. So if you come and look in here, the amount of like step on one versus another versus another down here, this one has almost no, step around it, they're not very consistent. Now I can't say that mine are necessarily consistent either, but what we wanna do is we wanna knock off as much of that edge and kind of smooth out any, smooth out any, any, uh, any rough spots and mill away to just be nice and smooth around the valve stem. All right, so we're doing that. We're trying to reduce the, the angles there. I could probably do a little bit more milling and try to take a little bit more of that step away. The other thing that we wanna do is we just wanna open up as much as we feel comfortable doing, but you don't wanna hit your seat. So a couple quick numbers, just, just for perspective. And actually let's get in here and take a look. But if you see how much, so your seat, you can kind of see the, the shinier part of the seat there. And then you see a lot of material on the insides they really, we don't, we don't need that. We want to just open it up to be wider at the, the neck. All right, so let's just take a few rough measurements and I'm not really, you know, I'm, I'm a little crooked on here, but just to give you an idea. So this is 1.28 inches. And then if we come over here to the same one, 
here were 1.33 so here this is a 1.56 on on an inlet and here 1. Uh, 1.6 on this one but again it's kind of i'm measuring it kind of a weird angle um so that's for the bowls we want to open it up we want to smooth out we want to knock off sharp edges and that is basically what i'm i'm doing oh and then lastly i got a block i'm just kind of block sanding a little bit just to just to, to take off some of these both surface rust and just a little bit of imperfections just to clean it up a little bit so that's it that's what i'm doing this one's a little more controversial on on right versus wrong and i'd say for right like you can find some really detailed in-depth stuff that's probably way overkill for me i do believe that this all moves me in the right direction it ain't gonna be perfect but i believe i should get some good benefits over stock so that's it hopefully this helps somebody out um this is what i'm doing and uh i gotta do the other side here and uh keep moving forward so thank you guys for watching take care we'll see you next time